In this Gem Cut Studio tutorial, I will demonstrate how you use the feature called the Scale XY of GCS to change the length to width ratio of an existing gem fasting diagram and have GCS calculate the cutting angles and index teeth necessary to cut a gemstone with the new length to width ratio. As an example for this topic, I'm going to use this gem fasting diagram which is the uh, Spellbound, the amazing Spellbound design by Jeff Ronimus, which I cut recently using a rather large piece of Rose de France amethyst. The gemstone turned out great, and here's a link to that video if you want to see me cutting uh, this Spellbound design. Now I have a very unique piece of gemstone rough that I now want to also cut into a Spellbound design. It's a lab-created piece of red barrel, also called Bixbite, and it was created using the hydrothermal method, which requires a seed uh, for the red barrel to grow on. And for some unknown reason, the lab used uh, for the seed a slice of emerald, which is barrel, but it's green. So the big spike rough grew with no issues, except that the center seed is green and the rest of the grown man-made lab-created uh, barrel is red. So barrel is barrel, so the seed was no problem, but it did create a very unique uh, piece of rough, which I picked up a while back, and I've been holding it for a while, not knowing exactly what to do with this piece of rough. Well, as I was cutting my Rose de France uh, into the spell down design, I got the idea that, hey, maybe this red barrel would make a very unique gemstone if I cut it into a spellbound design. If I align that green emerald strip across the middle of the gemstone. Now, the problem I have is that the design I have for spellbound will cut a length to width ratio of 1.5 times. So, whatever the width is, you multiply by 1.5, and that's going to be the length. So, if the width was six, the length would be nine. Um, the problem is that for my piece of rough, it's not really long and narrow, it's more shorter. So for me, for this piece of rough, rather, rather than wasting a lot of rough, I need a length to width ratio of 1.25, so that whatever the width is, you multiply by 2.5 to get the length. So I think that'll work better for this piece of rough. Fortunately, the creator of GemCut Studio, Reg Poirier, has created his software to allow users to adjust the length to width ratio. And that's accomplished in the scale XY feature of GCS. So just to be clear, there is absolutely nothing wrong with Jeff's rectangle spellbound design. And many, and I mean many of my fellow cutters, have used Jeff's spellbound design to cut gemstones, and they all rave about the gemstone that they have cut with this design. So it's not that I'm trying to improve on the design, I'm not. But for this particular piece of rough, I need a design with a different length to width ratio, or I'm gonna end up wasting some rough, and I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna use GCS to adjust the ratio from 1.5 to 1.25. Now I did start my journey of learning how to use GemCut Studio a while back and I have created a number of tutorials along the way showing my progress. And I feel that if you want to learn how to use Reg Poirier's GemCut Studio, you can just follow some tutorials and do what I did on the tutorials or what others have done. And I think you'll learn very quickly how to use GCS. So I created a playlist of all my GCS tutorials, and I even added all the other tutorials I found on YouTube to assist you. I included in my playlist all of Reg's tutorials, which are most helpful, and I also added Tony's Gem Designs tutorials. So if I've missed any other tutorials, please let me know in the comments, and I'll add them to this growing playlist so that anybody who wants to learn how to use GCS has all the tutorials in one place. Now the first thing I normally do in GCS before I start tweaking any design is to check the performance to make sure I end up with something at least as good as the design was before I tweaked it. Now there are so many options to consider 
when you talk about the term performance. And everybody, every cutter has their own views on what performance is. So for me, I keep it very simple. And for me, and just for me, I look at ISO brightness, head shadow, and window. And I look at it at the face up position or the zero degree tilt. And I know that's rather simplistic, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll probably evolve over time to look at a few other features, but for now, that's as complicated as I want to get. Uh, and so that's how I define performance. So when I look at performance of Spellbound, I get about 40%, 40%, and 20% of the three categories of ISO brightness, head shadow, and window in the face-up position. So that will be my baseline. And although Spellbound, it is kind of unique, and there are other characteristics, including the frosting, which give this gemstone its kind of mystique and its own features. But for this tutorial of how to change the length to width ratio, it doesn't really matter which design I'm using. So it's still uh, the method to change the length to width ratio will be the same. So now I change the gem material uh, in GCS to barrel. Bixbyte isn't an option, probably because it's so rare uh, that it wasn't worth putting it as an option in the drop down. But any barrel is barrel, and aquamarine is barrel, so it has the same refractive index. So it's okay to choose aquamarine or any other barrel. The spellbound design was created for quartz, which has a different refractive index. So I always like to see how cutting a different uh, uh, type of gemstone with a different refractive index is going to affect performance. So regardless of what I'm doing in GCS, I always check this. Now I check tilt performance again to see if my performance at the face-up level has changed due to the cutting material of a different refractive index. And no change, it's still about 40, 40, and 20%, so that's good. Now I go to Edit and Scale XY in the drop-down options of GCS. On the right side of the screen, the current L to W ratio of 1.5 is shown. Either you can use the slider or just type in the new desired L to W ratio into the block. And in my case, I just type in 1.25. Now this is important. GCS will adjust both the angle of the mast as well as the index teeth but I only want to deal with whole numbers when we're talking index teeth. Otherwise, I'd be spinning my cheater back and forth and I'm not sure what a 0.1 of an index tooth equals on the cheater. Uh, it'd be very confusing. So to keep it simple, I just want to use whole numbers on my index. So I always check nearest index in the bottom right of the screen. That's just me. Then select apply and GCS makes the changes to the gem cutting design for your new length to width ratio. Now as a final step, I always go back and check the performance to see if my changes uh, made a mess out of things or if we're still in the ballpark with performance. So again, I select the drop down tools and then tilt performance and I look at the performance of the face up or zero degree tilt. And I get about a 5% increase in brightness not not really significant. I doubt the human eye would notice. Some of you, I guess, would think it does. Maybe it does, but not, not significant. But at least performance did not go down. The manual optimizer is the feature in GCS that I really like. And I use it very often when I'm getting ready to cut pretty much any new gemstone. It checks the effect of minor tweaks to the crown or the pavilion and what, what the effect would be on performance. Select Tools, and then Manual Optimizer from the drop-down options. You may want to change the grid divisions at the bottom right of the screen. For me, looking at about seven options per row is about all I want to look at. The gemstone in the center of the group, if you click that, that's the one that shows you your current design, our, our 1.25 length to width design. And it shows you the same results as the tilt performance showed previously. So now you pick just a couple of gemstones around this one to see if performance improves by changing the angles of the crown or the pavilion. And 
I don't want to spend a lot of time uh, examining every conceivable change to the angles. Uh, you can. I just don't think it's time well spent. But I do take a quick check of three to four different options, and then I make a decision and move on. Uh, in this case, I look at one to the left of ours, and that does make a dramatic improvement in ISO brightness. So I check one more option to the left, uh, and these are reducing the pavilion angles, and it's not as good. So I move back to my previous selection, one to the left of where uh, the design was. Again, this reduces the pavilion angle slightly. I hit apply and I take that option and I'm done. I'm done tweaking the design, time to cut. And here are the tweaked cutting instructions for the spellbound design adjusted very slightly in GCS for barrel instead of quartz. And more importantly, a tweak to cut a gemstone with a length to width ratio of 1.25 instead of 1.5. So now I can cut my lab created red barrel uh, with an emerald seed. All that work. I hope this final gemstone is truly unique. So in this GCS tutorial video, I demonstrated how you use GCS to adjust the length to width ratio of a design and how GCS will automatically adjust the angles and indexes to give you the desired length to width ratio. So please let me know in the comments uh, if you have other ways to change the length to width ratio in GCS and what you think of my lab created red barrel project. And as always, happy fastening everyone.